Hey fish heads, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates. This is Mission Pearl Starship White. It's one of my favorite pearl whites on the planet. This is a spray session. I am coming to you live from my office chair in my home studio and I'm doing an overlay on vocals because this was an incredibly, like most most days are, incredibly busy day at Bullshed Swim Baits where my studio is um, and there's a lot of stuff going on in the background and also um, just to kind of give you some real time in how I go about doing, it's been a while, I think I've done uh, I've done one for crappy. This is um, this is going to be a really cool shad match the hatch from one of um, Gail Ratcliffe's burrito baits, carp hugger. Uh, one of our friends, Chris, goes down to Bacharach and he had a lot of success with Gail's burrito, so he wanted to put something similar in a shad pattern on these lipless crankbaits. And I've got 40 of them total, but I am only doing 20 for the camera today, only because. It doesn't take that long to spray a pattern, but what takes an incredibly long period of time these days is my ability to not be interrupted while I'm doing stuff. Or you can see to my left here, at the left of the screen, there's, um, there's a lot of other projects going on on this particular day. So I generally have anywhere between two and 300 baits or, you know, a combination of baits and a multitude of orders for both contract and everything else. So it's uh, this Dunkel Grun. This, these are kind of um, I'm 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 talking to you from the office and I'm sh I'm looking at the screen with you guys. So Dunkel Grun and and the Mission they're basically made for models. So anything from the um, the military models that like tanks and airplanes, things like that, that are really cool colors, but they also, I love using them for fish because a lot of like your Tennessee shad colors and things that are real close to that, uh, they look similar. So Mission has quickly become one of my favorite uh, if I'm doing water-based paints. I'm still doing some Createx and Wicked Line and the Goldens, like the high flow stuff, so I'm still doing all that. Um, but yeah, so my plate is pretty full, and I know a lot of people are very gracious with my uh, with my turnaround time, and it almost has to be that way because I have obligations that I never used to have before. So this is kind of the way I do things, and I just kind of wanted to, to give you a sneak peek of, of what goes on on a day-to-day -day function at Jekyll Bates and Bullshed Swim Bates. There may or may not be some background noise. I think at one point there were customers in the store. Now, if you've never been to Bullshad, uh, the storefront, we have a really cool storefront that Mike has built pretty much by himself. Um, he did that when we moved to this building from an older building um, that was a little bit smaller. So he got, the, he got the larger building knowing that I was coming from Arkansas about four and a half years ago. And it's worked out really well, but I am the very first thing that people see when they walk into the storefront. They see the baits and then they look to the right and there's my studio. And it's really cool to be able to talk to everybody and see everybody, but sometimes it can kind of get in the way because I'm very social. I like to talk to you guys, uh, love to speak with customers, love to see everybody's smiling faces when they come in and buy swim baits. Um, but if I'm in the middle of doing stuff, and I seem to always be in the middle of doing stuff, it just gets really hard to get projects completed in a timely manner, at least when I feel like they would be timely, if that makes any sense at all. If I'm rambling, it's just because it's the first time, one of the first times, that I've ever sat here and watched an entire video from start to finish and not been talking during the process, but I wanted to physically shoot this video this way and talk to you guys afterwards just to see 
how we were doing. Um, I haven't talked to you guys in a while. It's been, feels like forever since I've done a spray session. And pretty much what I'm doing with this is I'm adding a real thin layer of that dunkle grime, which is a, like a military olive drab green, a little bit darker. It's not a color shift, it's just a almost a pearl. A lot of their line on mission is pearl colors. Um, just adding that real thin top layer to the spine and the very upper sides near the eyes on these lipless. And that lays really, really well over that pearl white. And I didn't show you the pearl white because Lord have mercy if you guys don't know how to put pearl white by now, right? You don't, you don't need to see that 20 times. But what I do want you guys to see is the order of which I spray stuff. So if we're looking at this together, this is going to be like a like a grayish green shad pattern. I'm going to do a little bit of bling on it, but it's going to be pretty clean. It's going to have a, a little bit of scaling on it at the very end. And this is just me going through almost like an assembly line. This is similar to how I did the crappy video a couple of years ago in the same studio, but just wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, and it's, obviously it's not a swim bait project, but it's based off of a swim bait. So you can hear my air compressor kicking on. That's something else that's really hard. Uh, it's, I'm usually when I'm teaching and, and doing videos, I can't go continual shot. Uh, on this, I kind of can because I'm talking after the fact. But the air compressors get loud. Um, there's a lot of background noise that's very difficult for me to, to really talk to you guys the way I used to in spray sessions. So we're going to see if this works. If you guys like the way um, this video is coming out, let me know in the comments below. I uh, love hearing from you guys. But we're about seven and a half minutes into this and I'm still running just the, the basic Dunkle Grime green over that pearl white. And it's a really like a rich, creamy pearl white. And it lays really well. Mission paints lay down really well, too. Uh, I've been doing a lot more with lacquers. I've been doing a lot more with, um, like, the polyurethane. There's urethane paints that I use, polytranspar. Those are fun to use as well. They're more um, taxidermy colors. And pretty much have to wear a respirator. I'm actually wearing a respirator now. Um, I, use, I use my respirator pretty much all the time. And that's another reason why I'm going to try and do vocal overlays on, you know, the voiceovers on top of this because when I'm teaching and I'm painting 20 baits for the camera or even one that's that's got lots of layers or if I'm not using, basically, anytime I put my, my, uh, my respirator on, I'm painting. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of paint it is. And that's just... I've been doing this for, shoot, over 10 years now, um, professionally, and longer than that, just training myself how to do it. So I just, um, I don't want that stuff in my lungs anymore. You know, I really, I started to feel the difference when I was talking to you guys and teaching and doing a lot of spray sessions back to back. Um, and it, it just takes its toll and I'm trying to really really be health conscious and lung conscious so that's one of the reasons and or at least another reason that I'm trying to get this video done the way it is now you can see it's kind of like an assembly line to where I'm doing one color one one performance at a time basically like one thing at a time and I'm going through every single one instead of trying to paint one bait all the way through and then the next bait this just seems to run a little bit smoother so if you guys are just starting out you're trying to figure out well how can I how can I get 20 baits done in a fairly quick period of time so this video start to finish is, is about 20 minutes so in about 20 minutes I get 20 baits done except for the eyes so spray time it's about a minute of bait that still doesn't come close to what they can do overseas um, it's unbelievable in Japan and China 
how efficient they've become at painting and spraying. So I can get I can get close, and I'm sure that there's a lot of pro airbrushers here in the states that are doing the same type of work. I know Peyton can rock it out real quick too um, over at um, KGB Spro. So it's just it's just doing it time and time and time and time and time again. And one of the things that you know I I had to learn was that. If I start doing things like this, the way I'm showing you now, just one step at a time through however many baits I'm doing, um, man, I can get done a lot faster. So it's just, it's been a breath of fresh air, pardon the pun, because I'm wearing a respirator through this video, um, to be able to up my level, I guess, a bit. Um, and I hope that that helps you guys too, that you're saying, hey, you know, just buy a million helping hands and you will be able to run a production line a little bit easier. Space is another thing that I really don't have a whole lot of in this studio. Um, and I, I say it from time to time in some of my videos, but I really miss the size of the studio that I had in Jonesboro because I could put the roll-up garage door up on a beautiful day and get some really good fresh air. Now I have, you can see in this shot, I've got the fan going and, uh, and it does pull a good amount of air out but there's no air exchange uh, so unfortunately it just it isn't quite as efficient of a space as I used to have but we've made modifications and Mike has really helped out there because he's like the king of production and what he does so um, it's been super helpful but you can see just looking at the the bench behind what's going on here that there's just a lot of spray over spray and you're gonna have that when you when you do this day in and day out and it just it got tiring not wearing a respirator all the time so again if you guys like the way I'm doing this video and doing the voiceover after um, I'm still telling you what I'm doing in this and this is um the stencil that I'm using here, it's a stencil that I got off of Amazon. There is a link in the description below, and you're always welcome to reach out to me and say, hey, um, I think in the video, in the background, uh, there's a guy that's sitting in a chair. There were two customers that came in, and uh, he was an older gentleman, and he asked if he could just watch me paint. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. If you guys ever make it to the storefront and you want to hang out and talk paints and stuff, I would love to have the company. It's good company, always. Um, so you can hear me in the background talking to the customer. There was, um, was a guy and his son, and they were both coaches for 17-year-old uh, travel baseball. And they were from... Um, they were from Virginia, I want to say, and down here in Georgia. So that was pretty cool. So I'm coming down the home stretch here. I think I'm doing the kill dot. Yeah. So it's really quiet. There's no customers in the store. I think I actually stayed late this day to get this done for Chris. Um, Chris Hudson has been super understanding and wonderful, and most of you guys are. Um, I know on the website it says like up to four week turnaround, but it always seems like I get work piled on me from contract obligation at the most random time. So apologies for everybody that has gotten their stuff late, and, and there have been a lot of you. Um, if you can if you can handle it and again I'm very transparent I try to be if you guys hit me up on on messenger or you have a if you're one of the folks that has my text you know my, my phone number my cell number um, I do respond I always respond it's not always the answer that you guys really want to hear like hey your bait's done but I'll tell you what where I'm at in the process whether I've started it or not or if it's in clear coat um, I do a lot of layers of clear coat for you guys for most of these baits so this is just a standard black. So we had Mission White, we had Dunkle Run Green, and then we had um, this opaque, I think this is a wicked color, wicked black on here. And it's a hand cut stencil. And I'm just trying to pop this little shad dot into, there's a little pocket up above the gill plate on this. And uh, you can see that's where I'm putting it. So now I'm going to get a scale out here. Oh, nope. 
we're not there yet. <laughs> I'm trying to guess what I'm doing next. Um, just putting the, the final few on here. You guys can probably see that GSM Outdoors sticker decal on there because I am no longer um, contractually obligated for uh, Ketchco. Mike has transitioned our ABS Plastics line of bull shad baits over to GSM Outdoors. And no hard feelings, no bad blood between us and Ketchco. Uh, I think Ketchco is no longer called Ketchco. Um, I know Mystery Tackle Box is still in existence, but there was nothing but love between us and Mystery Tackle Box Ketchco and Alt Ross and Tej and Brett and all the guys out there. Um, I know that uh, things will hopefully turn around for you guys and I want to see you guys come roaring back because it was a, it was a good run. Um, but we are happy with GSM Outdoors. I'm very excited to be working on a couple of projects with them. And um, what is the, today I am, what is today? Today is June 29th, 2024. So let's see, this actual video was shot two and a half weeks ago. So that's the lack of time I have to edit stuff. So I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going through every single one of these on camera with you guys. You can figure out the shad dot. Now the biggest thing, if you notice that V notch in here on this stencil, that's to help me line up where I'm going to throw that shad dot. So it's almost like the sight on a weapon or, you know, if, if you, if you sight things in. That little notch on any of my hand cut stencils really helps me stay consistent from one side to the other on where I'm going to be putting this this kill they call it a kill dot shad dot so all shad have these little things so now we're going into this is a color shift and there's there's no secrets to this um, this is a hex scaling pattern uh, that I got from, I think this one is from Anarchy Model Stencil UK, and um, really, really good company to work with. I haven't worked with a company out here, whether it's Russ or whether it's Anarchy, that just isn't top notch. Really, really good people. Um, love working with both of them. I do most of my stencils, but I do use as many of everybody else's that I can just to give them love and and kind of show them on the YouTube channel and, and social media and I try to always give credit when I do use them but this is a this is a Vallejo it's called the shifters and they come in six packs and they're hella expensive they're way too expensive for what they are because they're under an ounce bottles of paint and um, and you have to buy all six I've tried I have written I've called um, Vallejo is out of Europe so all of their stuff is mixed and painted and shipped out from from there and they just will not sell larger quantities because they, obviously they make too much money off of this um, which is unfortunate but this is the finished product I'm um, coming down the home stretch on this I hope you guys have had a really really good time with this if you like this leave a comment let me know if it was cool for you guys so you can see that it's very transparent and i hope you guys have a wonderful day cheers and happy casting from jekyll bates